فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to start uh, مختصر أحاديث الصيام آداب وأحكام أما أحكام وآداب written by Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan Hafizahullah ta'ala This book is a summary of a hadith pertaining to fasting rulings and manners Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan who is the author he is still alive في قيد الحياة the Shaykh, he resides in Al-Qasim, Buraida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us the opportunity to meet the Shaykh and to benefit from his ocean of knowledge. Rahimahullah, to take something from it. He's a well-known author and a well-known scholar for the excessive books that he's written and those which he has explained. He has a Sharah on Bulugh al-Maram, which is a very good explanation, Minhatul Allam, which is Sharah Bulugh al-Maram. He also has an explanation on al waraqat by Imam Abi Ma'ali al Juaini rahimahullah. And when we were explaining al waraqat we relied on his sharah, Abdullah ibn Salih al Fawzani's explanation. We relied on that. And he has many other books. He has many other books, rahimahullah, uh, hafidhahullah. This book is a summary of a hadith pertaining to fasting. The way the author organized it is he brings 20 narrations for the 20, first 20 days of Ramadan. 20 hadiths for the first 20 days of Ramadan. Every day you take one hadith. And he wanted it for people to take it after Asr every day. To release one hadith for the people so they can benefit from it. 20 days. Then he made nine hadiths pertaining to the last 10 days of Ramadan. So in total, Ramadan could be 29 nights. The Sheikh has a hadith every night for it. Then what he did was he placed four hadiths. After Ramadan is over and the month of Shawwal comes, the Shaykh Rahim Hafidahullah, he wrote four narrations. So in total, how many hadiths do we have? 33. 33. Every single day, inshallah ta'ala, we will do one hadith. Every single day, we're going to do one hadith, extract benefits from it, and inshallah ta'ala, allow you all to benefit from it, inshallah ta'ala. We're now going to, inshallah ta'ala, start with the hadith. Al-Hadith al-Awwal, the first hadith. The first hadith, what's the chapter for it? Al-Hadith al-Awwal, the first hadith. Fi wujub al-siyami wa shay'un min hikami. That fasting is obligatory and some of the wisdoms in fasting. That's the chapter of the first hadith. The Sheikh then brought... The hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar <coughs> radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal bunya al-islamu ala khamsin shahadati an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna muhammad al-rasulullah wa iqami al-salah wa itai al-zakah wa hajj al-bayt wa sawmi ramadhan muttafakun alayhi In this hadith there's an evidence that fasting is obligatory. 
and that it is a pillar from the pillars of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made it obligatory upon the creation for a wisdom and reasons are behind why Allah tabarak wa ta'ala legislated fasting. The one who knows it, knows it. Alimaha man alimaha wa jahilaha man jahilaha. The one who knows it, knows it. And the one who is ignorant about it, is ignorant about the wisdoms that are in fasting. The first wisdom in fasting is, that is in fasting, the first is, and of course the first ruling, so in this point of the hadith, we're talking about what? Hukmu siyami The ruling of fasting. And the secrets. And the wisdom behind fasting. Annahu ibadatun lillahi ta'ala. Fasting is a worship for Allah. In which a person gets closer to Allah by doing it. And it is leaving what you love, what you desire, you're leaving it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, in obedience to Him, in following in following His command. And then what becomes clear? Your Iman, it's the, the essence and the true claim of your Iman becomes clear now. فَيَظْهَرُ بِذَلِكَ صِدْقُ إِمَانِ Your Iman being true now becomes clear. Also what becomes clear is وَكَمَالُ عُبُودِيَتِهِ لِلَّهِ Your complete servitude for Allah that you are a complete slave who submits himself to Allah تبارك وتعالى وَقُوَّةُ مُحَبَّتِهِ لَهُ And that you excessively love Allah تبارك وتعالى That you would push aside your whims and desires and what you love. You want to eat but you say Allah told me not to eat so I won't eat. You want to have intimacy with your wife, you say, I'm not going to do it because Allah told me not to do it. You're pushing aside what you want and what you desire because you love Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Warajai warajaihi ma'inda. And you also are hoping what is with Allah. Jannah. Seeing Him the day of judgment. You're doing it for that sake as well. Because that slave knows. That Allah being pleased is connected to you leaving of your desires. And he puts forward, and he puts forward that which pleases Allah wa ta'ala over his own whims and desires. And because of that, فَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ A lot of the believers. If he was beaten, or if he was even imprisoned, for him to break his fast one day, a lot of Muslims won't break their fast. A lot of them. They won't. Because there's that spark of good in them. There's that spark of khayr that's still present in them. Number two, so those are wisdoms. That's the first wisdom and the, that are, are in fasting. Number two. Fasting is a means to piety. It's a means to piety. And it is a way to purify yourself. It is a way for one to purify his soul by obeying Allah that which by obeying Allah in that which He commanded you. And to stay away from وَالِنْتِهَاءَ To stay away from that which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has told you to stay away from. Qala Ta'ala Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh, those of you who believe, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ Fasting was made obligatory on you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Like it was made obligatory on those who came before you. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so you may gain piety from your fasting. What taqwa piety 
is jima'u khayra'i dunya wal akhirah. Piety is the summary, it's the conclusion of the good of this world and the hereafter. That's the gist of khayr. That's the true essence of khayr. Which is what? In this world and also in the hereafter. It's taqwa. Every fruit that comes from fasting, every F -F -F effort that comes from fasting, it actually springs from piety and taqwa. Point number three. From the wisdoms of fasting is حَبْسُ النَّفْسِ عَنِ الشَّهَوَاتِ to imprison your soul, yourself, and your soul from desires. By what? By staying away from food and drinking. Then that would lead to what? The person's veins tightening. And once your veins start to tighten, it strips from shaitan some of his ability. Because that's where shaitan flows in the person. Inna shaitan yajri min ibn adami majrad dam. Shaitan runs in the person where the blood flows. That's where it runs. So by abstaining from drinking and eating, the blood flow becomes low. And little, and it weakens shaitan's ability. And once it weakens shaitan's ability, what happens? Taqillul ma'asi, the sins become little. The person is not now driven by whims and desires. And that's why the Prophet commanded one, the young boy, who's full of desires, he said, Ya, ya ma'ashar al shabab, man istata'a minkum al ba'a, falyatazawaj. Any one of you who has sexual desires, then marry. And if you're not able to get married, and you can't, then upon you is fasting. Why? Because fasting will prevent you from falling into zina. Because your body becomes weak, your system becomes weak. If you only think of something, your mind's only going to think about food. Number four. وَمِنْ حِكَمِ الصِّيَامِ From the wisdoms of fasting, number four is أَنَّ الْقَلْبَ يصفو. The heart becomes pure. The heart becomes cleansed. And the mind becomes free. وَيَتَخَلَّى لِلْفِكْرِ وَالذِّكْرِ The heart and the mind becomes free to think clearly and to think straight. And also to remember Allah. Because taking in your desires, يقص القلب taints it taints your heart. ويعمي عن الحق أن also blinds you from the truth. And fasting, يحفظ على القلب fasting protects your heart. والجوارح and it also protects your limbs. It protects it in terms of its spiritual side and it was also proven that it also protects it the physical side of your body as well you see countries that um, complain about obesity fasting is a form of diet that one can protect himself from having high level of cholesterol diabetes and whatnot Number five, from the wisdoms of fasting is knowing and acknowledging the blessings of Allah upon the slave. By fasting, you will know the blessings which Allah has bestowed upon you. By your body being full, when you drink and you eat a lot, you will realize that you used to have a lot of food. And you will come to realize how much, mashallah, whenever you were thirsty, you had a water to drink. 
And then it comes, and then it leads you to remembering what? The fuqara and the masakeen, those who are poor and hungry and the people who are starving around the world. You will realize they never had that option that I have today. You go to a chicken and chip shop and you choose what meal you want to have. And you say, mm, I've had this so many times, let me have this one today, let me try this one. You have options to choose from. When you, when you fast, you realize these options are now it's not something you have anymore. So it actually makes you remember the blessings that you had. And then it also reminds you of those who never had this blessing. Not just Ramadan, but there are people who Ramadan is every day for them. They don't have this at all. You have nothing to drink. They drink dirty water. They eat food a day, and maybe another day they may not have no food to eat. A mother has to choose between her children. She has to choose between her children. Which one is she going to let that to die? So she can give the other one food. And then it will lead to gratitude, which is a characteristic that is needed. When you remember all of those things, you start to come with gratitude, a characteristic that is needed. And you will also become one who realizes. You will come to I know the pain and the suffering that my brothers and sisters around the Muslim world who are suffering. And this is a principle, brothers. The blessings, the weight in which that blessing has, you never know unless you lose it. This is a principle. Companionship is a form of prevention. Or companionship is something that prevents you from really seeing, seeing things as it is. Meaning, your friend, he's, while he's with you, you don't really know what he is. You don't understand his quality. But the day he moves out of that position, and every spot that he was holding on for, you start realizing, I never used to think about doing this. Some people complain about their parents. They say, my, mom, my dad doesn't do much for me. Or my mom doesn't do much for me. The day they die, you realize that space is now open for you. That little spot that he was holding on to. You start to realize the position that they were holding. That's what Ramadan does to you. It takes away from you something so you can I know it. So you can come back to your senses again to realize this blessing that you have. Number six. From the blessings of fasting is The health benefits that come with it. The health-based benefits that come with it. Because when a person eats less, they've got a healthy body. And it protects your body in that form and way. What people don't tend to understand is that it doesn't just, fasting doesn't just become something that helps you in your physical health, but it, is, it also benefits you in your time. You've got more time, the time that you used to sit down and you used to eat, this doesn't exist anymore in Ramadan. So you've got more time to worship Allah. You've got more time to do khayr and good. That time is not there anymore. We spend hours of eating. If you calculate a day, time that we walk to a restaurant, time when we walk back, or the time that the wife prepares the food, or the time or this or that, or the time that you sit down and try to sit down and to eat the food, it's what? Huh? It's, a, it's, a, it's time. Calculate it per day, you see maybe an hour or two you're, you're spending eating. That now is time which you can sit down and do adhkar. And remember Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. In conclusion, brothers, conclusion, the wisdoms in fasting are great, wallah. And those were only some. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala connected to fasting a lot of reward. And a lot of ajr in which a person will gain. If only we were allowed to be given an understanding of the reward, our mind would fl fly. We don't even know the reward that's prepared for us in, for fasting. Because later we're going to come to the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah said, 
As-sawmuli, fasting is for me. Wa ana ajzi bi, and I reward. I reward the one who's fasting. And it's not even told to us what Allah is going to reward them with. The principle is imhamul ajri. When the reward is hidden from you. When Allah tells you, I'm going to do something for you. And he doesn't tell you what he's going to do for you. Yadullu ala qadari. Yadullu ala idham al ajr. It shows how high that this reward is going to be. Allah is saying to you, the ones who are fasting, I'm going to reward them. I'm going to reward them. Is that going to be like something cheap or something simple or easy? La wallah. So there's a lot of reward, but we can't even comprehend that reward. And we'll speak about that more in details, inshallah, in the upcoming ahadith that we're going to take, inshallah ta'ala. We'll stop there for this hadith, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma wafiqna li tiba'i al-huda. Oh Allah, give us the ability to follow the guidance. Wajannibna asbab al-halaki wa And prevent from us the path of destruction. Warzuqna al-fiqa fi deen. And give us understanding in the religion. Walwafatu ala sunnati khatam al nabiyyin. And make us those who die upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Waghfir lana wa li walidina. Forgive us. And forgive our children and our lineage. Wali Jami'i al Muslimin and all the Muslims. Akulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li walakum wa li sa'iri al Muslimin min kulli dhambin fastaghfiruhu inna huwa al Ghafur Rahim. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.